Hi, this is Douglas Ferguson, and this is part two of the Kodachrome tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, go check it out. I'll put a link up right here so you can just go click on it and look at it, look at it if you want. If you don't want it, you don't need to look at part one in order to know what's going on in part two, as part two is just the same thing with some tiny little tweaks, but we're going to be using Film Convert uh, in conjunction with the Kodachrome grade. Uh, I noticed that when using Film Convert, it definitely gives it that more film look. That especially if you're really going for something more vintagey, it, it does does really uh, tend to help out. So this is going to be really quick. First, I'm going to show you guys how it's going to look, and then we're going to go through the grade and we'll go through it. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to add Film Convert, and uh, this footage is not the foot. I didn't shoot this footage. Uh, this is footage that I got from Red's website. Um, I saw it and I was like, man, you know, I was going to use some original footage that I shot. But then once I saw this footage and, and I played with it a little bit, I was like, oh, man, I got to do something with this. This has got to be it. So this was shot with the Red Weapon, I believe. And it was originally shot at 6K, even though I've, I've pulled it down to uh, 1080p just for the sake of this video. Um, here we go. So we add Film Convert. And... This looks okay already, but we, we're not done. And I'm just going to show you guys really quick. I, I created uh, a set of LUTs um, all based off of the Kodachrome look. And I created them because I use this look a lot. And so I just wanted to have it you know, ready when I needed it. So first we're going to just go to looks real quick. I'm gonna, I like to use um, looks to, to add LUTs that I'm going to use because I can just dial in how strong they are and how, you know, with the strength and everything. So choose LUTs, we're going to go up, that is not the one, here we go, Kodachrome, and these are all different LUTs that I've created over the time, just for work. Alright, we add it, and so this is kind of what we're going to go for, if you look at like the skins look really nice, and usually I, I want less magenta, but this magenta, it, it looks really good, it makes him look like he's, you know, been... Uh, this is like cowboy, like he's been, you know, weather beaten look and everything. And so this is the kind of look we're going for. Now I'm, I am going to make some tweaks. So it's not going to be just like this, um, as I've improved over it over the time and everything. But generally speaking, we're going to go for something close. So now we're just going to get rid of this. And one thing that's different from part one um, going into part two is that we're not going to have we don't need that adjustment layer of the black and white because the the film convert kind of gives us that same mutedness that we need and that's what we want we want those muted tones and and we already get that with film convert so we're just going to open up an adjustment layer we're going to go to hues and saturations and once again, we're going to bump up our saturation to 50. Um, you might want to change that if you're using, once again, if you're using DSLR footage, I would recommend 25. Red, we're going to take our reds and drag them into the magenta. It's one. We're going to go minus six. And then 15. Take the yellow. Lightness 25. Go to blue. And we're going to drag our blues into the magenta. Let's drag it a little more than minus 7. Let's go minus 8. That's fine. So you're just a little more into, not the magenta, excuse me, into the cyan. You're just a little more in, in the blues are a little more in the cyan than they were uh, when we did part 1. Now let's go to channel mixer. And I'm going to try to breeze through some of this uh, quickly as I can for those of us who already done part one. But um, we want our red reds to be 85. Your red. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I just bumped my arm. Sorry about that. <laughs> Your red green is going to be 10. And 
your red blue will be minus 15 and your red constant is just going to be 15 then we're going to go down to blue red blue is going to be I mean red green is going to be I mean excuse me sorry blue green is going to be minus 10 and then your blue red is just going to be 15 and then we're going to go over to color balance so we're going to make some adjustments from what we did in part one to what we're doing here because we we have some skin tones in, in the mix and we definitely want to make sure uh, one thing about this is uh, I, like I said in part one fairer skin tones the magenta really pops and really makes the skins a bit more magenta so you definitely want to be able to balance that out and where you balance that out is between the highlight red and the highlight green so let's just go through this real quick red shadows is 25 excuse me minus 25 Red midtones, minus 25. Your red highlights. We're going to make the highlights, the red highlights, 10. In part one, we did 15. This time, we're going to do 10. And we're going to do the same thing for the green, highlight, for the green highlights. Instead of, uh, minus, <clears throat> instead of minus 15, we're just going to do minus 10. And then the green midtones, instead of eight, we're going to make them six. All right. So as you can see, our skins are just touching that magenta and they look really nice and they're not too aggressive. It's not too like he's, he doesn't look like, like a tomato or something like that. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add another adjustment layer and we're going to be using color finesse to really bump up everything. And again, this is one of my favorite tools. Uh, if I ever have to do uh, use after effects, I don't use after effects as much anymore because I just do everything in resolve like most people, but I really like it for when I'm just doing a general, grade or when I'm just making a I, I like to make LUTs just for myself you know I don't really give them out they're just for me and we'll, you know for the stuff I do and so um, I, a lot of times I'll just use After Effects because I, I don't want the LUTs to be too aggressive I always want them to just be something that can help the footage not something that automatically changes everything about your footage so we could also make adjustments here so if you see you see how the shadows are really down if we wanted to if you want to this is up to you you go down the shadows and you could just bring up the gain in the shadows just a bit as you can see it only affects the shadows it doesn't really affect anything else and that's fine actually I went to midtones oops reset shadows here we go and just bring up the shadows just slightly. I don't want to go too much. All right. So we want our saturation here to be about 125 for our master. And highlights. I kind of want to bring the saturation down. So I'm going to bring it, but I'm just going to bring it down to 50. Midtones, I want to bump it up a little bit more so I'm gonna go to 135 and then for shadows I'm gonna bring it down to about 10 I don't want to get rid of the saturation completely um, in the shadows because we do have a lot of shadows here and I just don't want it again like a lot of people do that and you see like the contours of his face this would all be kind of black and white and it'd look really weird in the skins I really hate that look that you know what you see in a lot of like the Zack Snyder films or um, that crushed look, I just really don't like it. <laughs> so I always want a little bit of saturation in the shadows. You know, I, I do, you know, like to desaturate my shadows, but I, I just want a little bit in there. And then we're just going to add some contrast. 
Then we're going to play with the contrast center just a bit, just a tiny bit. Because I want, I want a little darkness in here, not much, about right there. I want a little darkness in this. I, I don't want it to look, um, because it's raining and you could also, it could be, like I said, you're telling a story. This could be a storm. The lights are out. This is, you know, it's only lit by, you know, this could be a firelight or whatever. This little light right here. So you kind of want to tell a story with your grading. And so I'm trying to tell a story here because there's this rain going on. It could be a storm and he's worrying about a cow that got loose or something like that. So we got to really try to, your color grade should be something that affects the story and it's about your story. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make a story. Okay, so that's good. Okay, I might want to add a little more saturation in the master. So I'm just going to take it up to 130. Bump it up a little bit more. Okay. So, again, as you've seen from our other one, the other one was, was really nice, and it was heavier grade. This is a little lighter grade, and I kind of did that on purpose. I didn't want to go so heavy. I wanted it to look a little light. I wanted it to, I want, that's the story I wanted to tell. Um, so let's add a little tonal split here, but we have to, again, you want to be careful. I like to do it in colorista. Like I said before, it just makes it so much simpler. And it's a really, this is like one of the best, again, one of the best coloring tools that a lot of people just sleep on, but it's really good. So my favorite is blue and yellow, as you guys know. So we're going to go with that a real dark blue. And I, I want a really intense, almost touching orange yellow. And I want less blue in the shadows, but I do want some, just not a lot. Right there is good. And I kind of want more yellow right there. And then we're going to go to selective color. If you've never played with selective color, it's a really, really cool tool. Anybody who's like familiar with um, Photoshop knows about the power of selective color. Um, and I'll probably do some uh, more tutorials just using this as a, as a tool just to get a different look or get, because you can really isolate different colors and really make different colors do different things. And I really love it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go to blacks. And we're going to take this, lift out blacks just a tiny bit, not to like hip hipster levels, but I would say right there. It's just almost reaching hipster levels of, of lifted blacks. Got to be careful with that. And we go to neutrals. And we're going to drag our neutrals up almost to equal levels. All right there. All right, a little more. And then what we're going to do is, if you remember when we added film convert, um, I like to turn the grain off, which I didn't do before. Okay, so I'm turning the grain off now. Grain will be zero here. But we are going to add some grain to this image. And we're just going to use After Effects is add grain which is a really, this is again, an another really good tool. A lot of people don't utilize too much. Um, so as you can see, it looks really grainy and, uh, and everything. And we want to, we want to have a preset. So let's go to, I kind of want it to look like it was 250D, just slightly underexposed. So let's go with that. Let's go to 250D. right so now we're gonna make some tiny adjustments and first thing is we're gonna make monochromatic so no saturation in it because mostly when I'm looking at Kodak I don't really see much color noise or color grain in it I do see it on Fuji Fuji always has that kind of color grain in it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to shadows, midtones, highlights. This is where all your green is and we want to control this. So we already 
we see a little we want the, the we want it to be mostly in the shadows the grain because we want to make it again look like it's slightly uh underexposed when we shot it so we want we're just going to go zero in the highlights for the midtones we're going to cut this down in half so we're going to go to 50 percent and then in the shadows we're going to do the same thing And then for the overall, which is right here, the intensity, we're just going to take that down to about 65. So now we have something that can almost looks like it was shot probably in the 70s or maybe uh, late 60s, early 70s, which is the kind of color and the look we want. You know, it's like this can be some kind of old cowboy movie if you want. No, not an old cowboy movie, but like a rancher movie or something like that that they used to make in the 60s and 70s. Not like a cowboy film. It looks a little bit too modern for that. But you know what I mean. So there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you'll see it. It's a really short clip. It's only three seconds. <laughs> but uh, you'll get you'll get a chance to really look at this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I enjoyed making it. I actually took longer to make this one than I did uh, part one. Sorry about that. But I actually got into just doing this. It's just really uh, something I really like doing. I really wanted to tell a story with this color gray. I just didn't want it to be something general. And that's that's really what it is. Um, when you color gray, a lot of people have all these standards. And they always say, well, it's got to be like this. And maybe your blacks are too crushed. Or maybe this or maybe that. It's all about the story. You know, it's all about the story. Let the story dictate the color grade. That's really what I like to do when I'm shooting footage because then that's how that's how you help the story. You help people will feel it and be a part of it and be in it. You know, if you if you stick to like a standard and say it has to be this way all the time, you're gonna lose a lot of uh, a lot of what you're trying to say when you're telling your story. Um, thank you very much, and I look forward to the next one.